Ah, welcome back. My name's George, and today we're finishing off the Hacker Sovereign RP18 FM section so that we will have all of the receiver side working both on AM now and on FM. And what you've just seen me do there is check for output, and I'm now just going to switch the signal generator on. And now we get a tone through the through the radio. Now it's not aligned at this point, it's working. And I think I'm going to take you through to how I got to that point. What I've done, and I'm just going to turn the radio over, the first thing you might notice about the FM section is that all of the transistors have been replaced for modern silicon transistors. What I found was the AF117s, two of them were working, two of them were not. And to be realistic, they're not very good. They're, they're not the best transistors in the world. Even if you flash them and get rid of any short circuits, they're still not gonna be as good as modern silicon transistors. So what I've done is I've put in some low noise uh, silicon. It's not aligned, as I say, so we should be able to get more performance out of it. But uh, just to point through, um, I'll use uh, this probe, because it's red. You've got the one up the top, that one, that one, and that one. And they're all, as I say, they're all silicon. Uh, just a, a cheap half-penny transistor. I, I buy them by the thousand, and you pick them up for about £8 per thousand. So that makes them a lot cheaper than AF117s, GT322Bs, uh, AF127s, if you can still get any of them these days. The GTs have dried up because of the silliness going on in the world, and the AFs have been obsolete for quite a long time, so uh, why bother using old stuff when new stuff works just as well, in fact, if not better? So how did I find out that the transistors were all not very good? I used my spectrum analyzer of all things just to make sure that the first thing that the oscillator in the FM module was running and I have put the probe on the IF input to the FM IF strip board and I'm going to point it out with my finger on this screen up here you can see this 84.22 1825 that's the frequency that is coming out of that RF oscillator and that is your raw frequency now if you add the IF to that 10.7 you should get around about 90 95 megahertz which is close enough for this purpose of testing I then went down the board and uh, this is where it gets a little bit sort of squiffy I got a little bit of raising signal right in the far corner down at the bottom here and what I can do is I can change that to um, let me change the settings on that to um, center at 10.7 megahertz let's take that off so you can see all the numbering you can see that there's a slight peak there already because the spectrum analyzer is quite sensitive and actually picks up its own oscillator at 10.7 which is a bit annoying really so what I've had to do was uh, sort of ignore that and I'm looking now for an increase in noise by going to the first output of the transformer after the transistor so we've got the 84 megs coming in here it goes through this transistor here here is the coil and here is the output and as you can see we get an increase in noise at the 10.7 mark now if I set the marker to show the peak at 10.7 and we can do that there you can see the noise let me put the probe on it all along the baseline just peak up slightly which is 
showing that there is actually 10.7 and a bit there. It's, it's a very weak signal. I then come down to the next IF point, and as you see, I can still get a rising noise in the background in around about that position. And we can look all the way along, and you'll see that uh, it should be just at 10.7, but obviously it's a quite a wide signal, but we are getting the movement. And then I came down to the last, well, not the last, the next one to last section, and there we go, we get even more output. And again, we can use the output of the transformer to get a reading. And that sense, you know, that's tested the first, second and third transformers, as well as the transistors that are in that stage. And then we can come to the last one, and as you see, we get a massive signal at 10.7, plus the extra width there. Now, on FM, the signal is 75 kilohertz wide, and that's showing around about the 75 kilohertz width of the signal that is being generated there. Now, this is purely noise, and if I get rid of the scope pro or the probe at the moment and just go to the signal tracer we can hear that there's an output as you can see there and if I turn the signal generator on I don't need to turn it quite as loud but, but you can hear that on 95 megahertz out of the signal generator plus the 10.7 mixed with the 82 point whatever 82 83 point whatever um, gives you your 95 megahertz and there's the signal coming through the unit now if i go to the other side of the board just to show you again that path this is obviously on the back side of the board and you're thinking well how do you know what's what? Well, it's fairly straightforward because if I show you, these are these unused pins are actually, these three anyway, are the unused outputs on the secondary of the transformers. On this one, it's a little bit further over, but you've got an output on the secondary here. And uh, sorry, that's the input, and you've got the output just below it. And that shows you where you're getting your 10.7 signal through. I did also change, now that's the AM board, this DALI cap, because again, this one was suspect. I didn't need to change the one at the top of the board, the little Phillips, and I haven't changed this little Phillips. This one down here was the broken one, which has now been replaced as well. And as you see, we've got the board there. Now to run through, we've measured out of here on that empty pin we've measured out of here on the empty pin we've measured here on the empty pin and we've measured here on the empty pin which actually comes out and gets ready to go all the way back to the rest of the circuitry logical fault finding has, has pretty much said yes you know somewhere this stage wasn't working uh, yeah, so we now have the FM section working. As I say, the entire radio isn't aligned at this point. All it is is working. So we could, if we were lucky, receive a station. Uh, so let's well, let's try and do that, actually. I'm going to put the probe back on. Uh, let's put the aerial up a little bit. Now, round here, there's only one strong FM station. <coughs> That's the FM section working. The next thing to do is to work on the amplifier. And for that, I'm gonna do another video.
because I want to test it before I change anything and then test it afterwards. I hope you found this interesting. If you didn't see the first part on the AM board, I'm going to put a link. Um, where am I going to put it? There. I think I'll put it there. That's where YouTube will tell me to put it anyway. And you can watch the first part again if you didn't catch that. Or if you did catch it, then you can relate to the AM part working. I've also still got to tidy up this wiring round this volume pot. I'm still not convinced that the volume pot is 100% working, but at the moment it seems to be, so I'm going I'm to go with it and uh, just tidy up all this burnt wiring and uh, make this a little bit neater here. Uh, so with that, yes, let's get on to the amplifier on the next video. For all of those who are celebrating Christmas, um, happy Jesus' birthday, enjoy. And hopefully it's a great time for you with uh, your family, your friends, and uh, you get everything that you want and uh, everything that you wish for. And uh, hopefully the new year will be brilliant. Can't be as bad as this year, eh? Thanks very much and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.